Hello, what is up guys? Evil Duos Arm here today, and today I have for you part 11 of our 2D side scroller tutorial where we're going to be creating our start menu for our game that we've been working on. So the start menu is going to be basic functionality, load the game or quit the game, and then we'll add load different levels as we create more levels in the game. Um, I'll show you how to go ahead and do that at a later occasion. So just to show you what it looks like, when you go ahead and hit the play button, it's going to open up this little uh, start menu right here. We're going to have your option for new game. Load will work once we do uh, saving and loading system, so we'll go ahead and come back to this and code it in after. A quit button, so if we hit quit, it quits the game. If we hit play and hit new game, it goes ahead and loads us into our first level and we can continue to play along like that. So yeah, basic, basic start menu functionality. So to do that, what we're going to go ahead and do is hop down into our widgets menu down here. We're going to create a folder called menus. So widgets, menus, and then we're going to go ahead and create a new uh, thing that we're going to call title slide or title page or title whatever. So to do this, once again, you're going to go ahead and click uh, right click, and then we're going to go to user interface and widget blueprint. We're going to call this title menu, um, since I already have main menu created when I was going ahead to see how this worked. Additionally, you're going to need to have an image that you want for your backdrop. So for me, I have this 2D platformer tutorial series uh, that I've been working on. So I have this little template that I use for whenever I create the little icons. So we're going to go ahead and use that. Um, you're going to have to go ahead and find your own to do this. So anyway, go into your title menu thing that we just created. The first thing we're going to want to do is add in a thing called an image. So go ahead and click image and click and drag an image in. Size it so it's the size of the menu like that and make sure you anchor it to the center with the anchor option for the center. For the image, what we're going to do is we're going to drag this off to the right side of the screen just so it uh, snaps in, and then we can snap in our editor, and we're just going to go ahead and drag in our image that we uh, uploaded. This is just a JPEG file. Go ahead and upload any JPEG file. Nothing too crazy with that at all. Actually, really quite simple. Go ahead and drop this back into our little title menu thing here. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add in a vertical box to organize our button. So type in vertical box, click and drag that in. Really simple. Line it up wherever you want it. I like it on this left side here. Inside that vertical box, you're going to go ahead and add in three buttons. So click your button, and you can drag the buttons right into the box just like this to make it go faster. And then off of each of those buttons, you're going to have to put a text box. So go ahead and type in text, uh, right, just text, not text box. You just need the text option. Drag those into each one of the little buttons just like that. From down here, go ahead and select all the buttons. So control click on all of your buttons. And then over here, you're going to want to click the option that says fill. So on layout, padding, all this crap, go ahead and click fill. That will fill up the entire menu with your buttons. For each of the text blocks, you're going to go ahead and type in what you want to do or what you want to call it. So this is going to be new game for our top option. So type in new game into the top option. For the next button, we're going to go ahead and type in load game because that's going to be our load game option. And for the final one, we're going to go ahead and type in quit or quit game or whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to call it quit. So now we have our three buttons set up that we're going to do. I'm just going to go and center this a little bit better on the screen. I didn't really do too much, but hey. So the other thing you can do is if you don't like the way these buttons look or you want to add some cool flair to your menu or your design or whatever, you can hop into this appearance option down here. In the appearance option, you can change how these buttons look when they are hovered or when they're clicked on or all that. So let's make these a little bit more gray. Um, so what we do is we click on the normal appearance is what it's going to look like regularly. What we're going to do is hop down to the tint option so we can change the tint of it a little bit or the alpha channel if we want to have it be a bit more transparent onto the black background. I like that actually. Let's go with 0.5. And if we go ahead and click on the load game, we're going to do the same thing, drop the alpha channel down to 0 0.5. Same thing with the quit menu, we're going to go ahead and drop the alpha channel to 0 0.5. This is under the tint option on the right side. It makes it so we can sort of see through these buttons a little bit better. Next thing we're going to want to do, and actually if you wanted to do these all at the same time, you can go ahead and control click on all of them, and then you'll change all three of the buttons at the same time while you're doing this. So we're going to go back down to the uh, appearance tab here, and we're going to go ahead and do a hovered option. So when the button gets hovered, we want it to glow up. Um, so actually keeping it as it is, the brighter white color. And when you press it is what it looks like when it clicks, so we can leave that the same. So we really didn't change too much. Just know that if you wanted to change these to all different colors, you could do them all at the same time by control clicking. So we've got all of our buttons set up. That is good to go. So what we're going to want to do is click on our first button. So button 104, I guess, is what it's called on mine, but it'll be different depending on how you're going and all that good stuff. Go ahead and click on that first button, and you're going to scroll down until you see the option on clicked. So when you click on this button, you want to be able to do something, and this is where you would do any changes to like buttons. Like if you hover it and you wanted a tooltip to display, you do an on hovered option, or if you want off hovered, or all sorts of different things, that's where you do it. But we're doing a very basic, so we want to use the on clicked option, which is this top option right here. So go ahead and click that. So when we go ahead and click this button, what we want to do is we want to load our level, our level one. So what we're going to do is drag off the on click node and type in open level. So open level and the level we want to open is level one. It's what we named it. Eventually what we're going to do is we're going to have this open up our hub world when we go ahead and create a hub world that lets you load different levels and all sorts of different things when we deal with saving and loading. So that is something that will be coming up. Um, but for now, just open level one and we can go ahead and change this at a later occasion. 
So the other thing we need to do before we open level one is something that we're going to actually be doing in a later bit here. So what you're going to want to do is drag off this on click node and go ahead and type in show mouse cursor. And since this is a context sensitive item, we want to uncheck this context sensitive and we want to hit set show mouse cursor and we want to set that to false. You'll see why in a second. The thing we want to do is drag off of this target. So we need to drag off the target of the player controller. So the player controller, we want to be able to see the mouse cursor. So we're going to go get player controller and we want to get player controller, drag off of that, check, compile, save, and now everything is right with the cosmos. The other thing we need to do is head back into the designer. So click designer at the top right of the screen. And we want to do the same thing for the quit button. So under the quit button, once again, click quit button, scroll down to the bottom, type in on clicked or click on on clicked. And all we want to do is quit game. So just drag off the node, type in quit game. Uh, we can leave this exactly as it is. The specific player would be if you wanted like player three or player four if you're making a multiplayer game. So we don't got to worry about that. Just quit game for whoever's playing the game since this is a single player game. So that is it for our little uh, main menu here. Um, we can add more functionality later like an options menu or things like that. But just for now, just to get us running and up it to speed, we're going to go ahead and just leave it as it is. So go ahead and hop back into your designer tab where you've got your level design. And we're going to head over to the levels menu and we're going to create a new level called title. So go ahead and create title. It's going to be your title page, your title menu, your title, whatever you want to call it. Um, this is going to be the main loading screen that we splash into when the game starts. So go ahead and click into your title level and once again to create a new level all you're going to do is click level and you can create a new level however you want. I've already got title level so we're going to go ahead and delete that. Under title level what you're going to want to do is hop to blueprints at the top of the screen. So click on this blueprints icon and open level blueprint. So I already have crap in here. I'm going to go ahead and delete it and we're going to start over from scratch. So when you get in here you're going to have the option for event begin play. If you don't have the option type in event begin play and it will open up event begin play and start you off. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create the widget that we had just created. So what we're going to do is drag off of this and we're going to type in create widget. The widget we want to create is the widget that we had just made, which is title menu. Title menu is the one I just made with you. Main menu is the one I made earlier when I was figuring out what I was doing. So we've got our uh, title menu widget. The next thing we want to do is add that to viewport. So type in add to viewport and we want to add the widget to the viewport. Very, very simple. The final thing we want to do here is we want to enable mouse input. So the same exact thing we just done, you're going to have to uncheck uh, context sensitive and type in mouse cursor. And we want to go ahead and set it so that we can show the mouse cursor. So set show mouse cursor to true. So why are we doing this? Why do we want to see the mouse cursor? If you don't have that option selected, uh, basically you won't be able to click on any of the buttons because the mouse cursor isn't available for the player to click on. So this is going to make the mouse cursor open up. And then when we click the start game button, it gets rid of the mouse cursor and we go ahead and play on. When we go ahead and create like our upgrade system or anything like that, we're going to have to do the same system where we show the mouse cursor and disable the mouse cursor after. Once again, we need to get that player controller, player controller, get player controller, this option right here, and drag into the node to complete it. So now uh, the only other thing to do is to put a little bit of a delay. So when we open this up, all of the HUD items are going to open at the same time. So if we don't put a delay, uh, this will load second. So the character loads first, the level loads second. So we want to make sure that we have the uh, this HUD on top. So all we're going to do is a very short delay. So type in delay and the delay is going to be literally 0.02 seconds. Sure, that works just fine. If we go ahead and compile and save and hit play, you will now see that the menu loads up uh, as soon as we hit play on this level. So we can go ahead and hover our buttons. You see the buttons highlight when we hover them like we had just set up. So they have the different color. If you click new game, once again, it opens up level one and you're right in and ready to go. And yeah, that is basically it. The only other thing to do is to make this our starting level or the default level for, level for when the player plays the game. So to do that, hop into settings at the top of the menu here. And we're going to go to project settings. Under project settings, you're going to see the option that says maps and modes over here on the left. Go ahead and click maps and modes on the left. And the game default map, we want to go ahead and set to our title level. So the title level that we created. That basically means that whenever you start up the game, like if you were to actually publish this game, it would always load the title level first. So the player can always pick which one they want to run or which area they want to go to and all of that great stuff. So anyway, guys, that is basically it. Make sure to hit Control Shift S to save everything that you've done so far. Um, that way nothing gets deleted or anything. And that is all we're going to cover in this video. So the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to create a pause menu for the player in game that's going to pause the game and let you access the title menu or uh, quit the game from the pause menu. So that's what we got coming up next. So anyway, guys, if you did like the video, make sure to like, check out some of the other videos on the series or say subscribe so you stay updated whenever any new part comes out to the series. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I will see you at the next video. Peace.